Welcome to the OC Bitches. Welcome to the OC Bitches. Season two, episode one. And look where we are, you guys. Oh, yeah. If you're watching and if you're listening, we'll make a great description. <laughs> we are, um, we're on a great set, but it looks like the Cohen backyard, doesn't it? Yeah, sure does. Yeah. We're just we're just hanging out by a pool by the ocean. I don't know about you, but um, <laughs> this is the first episode of our second season. Can you believe we did one whole season? No, because it was 27 episodes. Yeah. And like when we shot the episodes, it would, took forever and, you know, and it was a lot. Mm -hmm. And we just finished doing every single episode for this podcast. It made me think about this actual schedule. And for those of you who might not know, when you shoot a television show, especially if you're doing 22, which is normal for mm -hmm. network television, 27 is not normal. Mm -hmm. You start in July and usually you're done by March, April. Mm -hmm. And then you have May, June off and start up again in July. And with 27 episodes, I have a feeling, I think Josh said um, when we spoke to him that he had only a couple weeks off. We may have only had maybe a month off. So do you remember what you were doing during hiatus? I had to think about this. Yeah, I bet that's a rhetorical question for you if I remember what I did on hiatus. <laughs> uh, not the first hiatus. I feel like, oh no. This was the first I hiatus. I do remember. Good. <gasps> Yay. I went to Hawaii with my family and Adam actually came with us. Uh-huh. And we had to leave early because my grandmother died. Oh. Yep. Real uplifting podcast for you all today. Oh. It's okay. That's okay. That was my, well, first, that was my first hiatus. I know. <laughs> well, I just remember that I was moving into a new home right down the street from Notre Dame there in Sherman Oaks. Ah, where I went so, to high school. I think we were all getting new homes right about that time. Probably. Yeah. 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 I think so. I I commented on this and I forget why, but yeah, I was living with my best friend Leah still mm -hmm. behind the Hollywood Bowl in our condo. Oh, I know why I talked about this, but it's not until the next episode. So <laughs> you're just going to have to listen next time. Okay. Um, but yeah, I think houses and traveling and whatnot. I remember Adam teaching my two-year-old sister at the time how to surf in the pool in Hawaii. Gosh, was she only two then? Yes, she was two. Oh, she wait, is now yeah. 19 in college in oh Ireland. Gosh. Right, because she's just a few years younger than than CG. Right. Oh, I love that. Yep. Oh, everyone's growing yes. up. That is our little catch up uh, for for everyone out there. But um, we're really excited. So it's just Melinda and I today. Yes, just just us. We've spent so much time exploring the show, the impact, this amazing, amazing first season, and I thought it. You know, let's just get into the episodes this time. Oh, but there was something else that I, I do remember being very aware of at the time while we were shooting. And I wanted to bring it up because we are into the second season. And, you know, people like to talk about um, or discuss, you know, the ratings of a show. Josh talked about that, you know, um, criticism, all those kinds of things. And we're, we will um, talk about those kinds of things. But, you know, guys, for the second season, for the first season, we were on Wednesday nights following mm. American Idol. Great. You know, both shows did really, really well. Second season, um, as a vote of confidence to the show, Fox moved us against, um, like, it was must-see TV. So there was Survivor on, there was Joey, there was Will and Grace. Right. And it was the best that Fox had done in that time slot but we lost overall like 30% of the viewers on Thursdays. Hmm. And we remained there until I think around the fourth season, they tried us back on Wednesday night and then moved us again. When you move a show that many times, it's, well, it kind of handicaps the show. Right. Because, the, the, you know, it's it's just definitely kind of dilutes the the audience. So I just wanted to say that, you know, that this was, you know, it's it's not, I actually really love this season. I love all the seasons. I know some people have favorites. But I love this season. First of all, because I think he, the writing for Summer mm -hmm. and Julie in particular got to be so much more fun. And we get to see, and of course they have to, you know, we have to break up our core four. So it, it brings a lot of conflict. This is a drama after all. Right. And um, you in particular had some really great things. And I'm, I was actually surprised as we, we are starting to watch the second season that, uh, yeah, I had a lot more to do, I guess, you know, acting wise. Uh, but it, it's kind of fun to see and, and I'm excited to watch along with everybody. I'm going to talk about the synopsis for this episode. So we're, you know, the first episode back, 
after the break. Uh, The Cohen's house is in a state of disarray, both with the renovations and with Seth gone. Having traveled to Portland to stay with Luke, Kirsten is fed up and wants Sandy to bring him home. Ryan tries to adjust to his life back in Chino, but is struggling. Summer and Marissa try to forget their ex-boyfriends, and Kayla becomes increasingly paranoid about what the DA has on him and his business. (laughs) It was directed by Ian Toynton, written by Josh Schwartz. And it uh, aired November 4th, 2004. It also had, uh, it, it attracted 8.6 million viewers, hmm. which is pretty good. Very good. Yeah, of I, course. I guess nowadays, like Josh was saying, it's a different thing because oh, all the totally. streaming and whatnot. But yeah, thanks <laughs> for watching back then if you did. So I also think that this episode really, it's almost like it's part of season one. It kind of finishes out season one. Yeah, Don't I think, think that's a fair assessment. Okay. Yeah. For sure. Right, right. Uh, and this, so this episode opens uh, <laughs> on, you know, the Cohen house in disarray. It's a construction site. But is it a construction site? Because every single construction worker there does not have a shirt on. And let me tell you, does not have a shirt on, but also looks like could be, you know, a strip club employee the or thunder constru- down under. I mean, seriously, these <laughs> men are in very good shape and they are shirtless and they are all shirtless, and that is just, I, I, my, the mind boggles. <laughs> I know. I, I wrote that it was a bizarre choice to have the shirtless men. So, you know, but I do feel, and in fact, um, I don't have exactly the details, but I'm pretty sure on this. Josh decided he didn't like the set and they mm-hmm. wanted to expand the set. So how do they do that? They write in this very funny uh, storyline that obviously can have multiple meetings, you know, number one, that it, it's it's symbolic of the chaos um, that is going on in the Cohen home because Seth and Ryan are gone mm-hmm. and it's a really hot, hot summer. And they've got, <laughs> I mean, I, of course, I don't think it's even legal for, for construction zone guys to not be wearing hats and shirts and things yeah, like that. Yeah, you're probably right there. <laughs> um, but my, my favorite thing was, the head, the G, you know, the general contractor, you know, the main guy, Archie, Archie, yeah, Archie. He, uh, you know, Sandy's like, how much longer? And he's like, two weeks. And immediately when he says two weeks, I automatically go to the money pit, which yeah. that movie still holds up. But yeah. I always laugh because everything <laughs> is always two weeks in yeah. construction. And then of course, six weeks tops, yeah. which means six months. Months. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. 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 So it's a really fun, fun, well, funny opening to the episode, even though. You know, Kirsten's obviously a mess and everything else going on. This, but this they had is fun like, with it. Yeah, I don't want to get on. Kelly's a strong woman. This reminds me of like, if you got on the bad side of Kelly, um, K- Kelly would be like this. But Kirsten, it's an interesting thing because they get into it. Obviously, they're upset. Seth is gone. Where is Seth? Like, where mm-hmm. is he? We have no idea. But obviously, he might not be in danger. We don't know. But when she's saying, I'm having enough of your hippy dippy parenting psycho babble. But you know, Sandy said something that really I thought was cold. He said, well, you've been so overprotective. You've kept Seth, Seth from even having a friend. Mm-hmm. So when they're, when they start like well, it's curling insults. Parents are stressed. And when you're stressed, you take it out on the other. I mean, I think, right. That's kind of how it goes. Yeah. Um, and then we are at Marissa's house, which is your house. If you can even call that a house. I mean, it's I a know. crazy mansion. The resort. The resort itself. Which is a beautiful shot, by the way. It's a pretty um, iconic shot of that pool and you two yeah. in your bikinis, which oh, kind of reminds me <laughs> back to the beginning. It's like the the pilot. You girls are now back to lane by the, you know, in your bikinis, by the pool, sipping. Well, what we find, um, come to find out is, is Newport Beach iced tea. Yes. <laughs> but I think what's interesting is, so you both have had the same thing happen. Mm-hmm. You're your men, the loves in your lives Mm -hmm. have left, but you're both dealing with it in a slightly different way. Yeah, which, (laughs) yes. uh, You know, the girls are talking it out and and Summer really lets her feelings be known. Uh, She can't even remember Seth's name, (laughs) I believe, is uh, one of her rants. And, you know, Marissa just seems very kind of aloof and, and... distant from it all. Well, and I I have to be honest, I'm really glad because uh, Summer says, you know, she spent all this time crying, but I'm glad we didn't see them crying. 
Yeah. That they moved got to skip on. skip over that. And, and, and Summer is, she's, she's showing growth. She's trying to move on. And then Marissa, on the other hand, is drinking again. Yep. And that's, she's dealing with it in that way. Yes. And, and even Summer kind of looks at her quizzically like, what is going on? Yeah. And then she says this thing, um, because, you know, I mean this in the least scandalous way, you're looking a little thin, which was kind of an in on the joke thing because, yeah, people in the industry, the media, commented on, comment on actors' weight, and it's just horrendous. Well, it's all, you know, every part of uh, an actor's exterior or what you see, like, it's just what people like to comment on, you know? And I think it's pretty unfair and you have to have pretty thick skin, but it's going to get in there, Mm -hmm. you know? Uh, But yeah, no, Misha was always very healthy in real life, you know? Totally. Yeah. She's 17 years old and it's just, and this is an example of what we were talking about, how, because I found this, um, Review. I was just looking up things mm-hmm. about the second season, and this is just a short thing. It, it, it said that in the second season, they were introducing teen lesbianism to spice things up and chipping away at the perfect 20 year marriage of Sandy and Kirsten. It still fulfills its remit of optical junk food, but like its fem, it, but like its female stars, the storylines are starting to look malnourished. Hmm. Not only is this person mm-hmm. writing about the compare, you know. Mm-hmm. for some reason, didn't like some of the storylines, but they have to throw in the actor's, you know, appearances. Yeah. Which was, I guess, that time. And Sometimes I, I, hope- I just want to turn it on people and be mm-hmm. like, let me just write an article just solely on how <laughs> you look and see how that makes you feel. Right, right. You know, or just talk about you. It's, it's, it's a hard thing, but, you know, you have to learn to ignore it, which hopefully right. we all have. I don't know. I don't um, know. I don't think it would fly today, and I, I hope it wouldn't fly, but that was... Anyway, I thought that was an interesting thing, but yeah, but it, it we is- also like learn a couple other things in this scene with Marissa and Summer. <laughs> we learned that Summer has a new guy mm-hmm. in her life, and we also see uh, oh, yeah. the yard guy who is shirtless. There's a theme here. No one works with shirts on. Mm-hmm. It's not allowed in the OC. I don't know if you knew that. So we see the yard guy. Summer has a dude. A lot of information. Nicholas Gonzalez, by the way, is a plays the yard guy. Beautiful man, and um, you guys might <laughs> he's gone on to a wonderful career. We will talk about him more later. Later. <laughs> See, I can't even talk sometimes. Yes. It's like, oh. Okay, so <laughs> we leave the girls, and now Teresa. We 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 see Teresa and Ryan. <laughs> They're together. Okay. Can, we have to talk about this scene. <laughs> what? It's awesome. It is so awesomely fucking awkward. And oh yeah. But 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 Ryan. Okay, she's dropping him off at, con- at, at another construction. Work. So yeah. he has a job at a construction site. Right, and right, Teresa right. is dropping him off. And, you know, they really want you to see how domesticated but also awkward the two of them are at this point, you know? Right, right. She hands him his little paper bag lunch. And says what? I, I peel peeled the your orange. orange. Now, there's nothing more emasculating than, I mean, <laughs> actually, think about this. I had to, at first I thought, so what's the big deal? And and on my drive here, I started thinking about that orange. And I thought, mm. have you ever seen a really, I don't know, just a, a man peeling an orange? Half the fun is peeling the orange and it could be kind of a cool, sexy thing. <laughs> and she totally, I just started picturing it. I've never, I have to say, Mindy, I've never <laughs> thought like, Damn, I wish that guy would peel an orange. <laughs> well, think about it. Think about him opening up his bag yeah, no, sure. and pulling out the um, plastic baggie with the with Oh, the yeah, peeled it's perfect. Or- By the way, the insert shot of the orange <laughs> peeled is like the most perfect, like, pulp-free <laughs> I know. orange sitting in this bag, which is pretty funny. But yeah, no, my favorite thing, I think my favorite takeaway, Mindy, is now I will look for any man peeling an orange and see if I'm turned on. Um, <laughs> well, especially in a wife beater... And, by the way, the way Ben is looking in oh, this no. scene. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Like, Ben disheveled, <laughs> like, hair not done, five it's o'clock scruffy. shadow scruffy. I was like, this is the first time I find myself attracted to Ben. I never knew. But, like, what? I'm watching this and I'm like, oh, hey. I got to say, <laughs> this is this theme will be um, recurring in these next few episodes. Yeah, a lot. Yeah. We're going to say I'm going to talk more about how I think Ben's hot, <laughs> but we'll get there later. Yeah. Okay, what's next? So then, so then we get to... Um, 
we're at Caleb and Julie's house. Mm -hmm. And I have to tell you about, um, so I, you know, if you remember, Julie had this bright orange hair and at one point it looked kind of like a tiger and it was really <laughs> hard to maintain. Mm -hmm. And in fact, I put, I had extensions. If you remember those, ex you didn't get extensions, but we had extensions. And, and over the summer, I was like, okay, so I, I, we decided that I decided actually, I didn't want to be that bright red because it was just so hard mm -hmm. to maintain. So mm -hmm. I went to the darker red, I hope. It, but I figured that it was kind of like Julie was like, new house, new do. Oh, yeah. You know, totally. Yes. So. Agreed. This is hysterical. Caleb, to paranoid about the flower truck. And does she hear any clicking? And she's like, okay, Nixon. You know, <laughs> you must be hyped up on blow. Something seriously wrong. And then, of course... She says she's getting Caitlin a new pony. And yeah. he's like, what's wrong with China? China has alopecia. Yeah. <laughs> and don't put it on the company card. And yeah. that trigger uh -huh. of why. Yeah. Yeah. You it's see it all written all over <laughs> you. You were like, oh, fuck. Not again. <laughs> okay. No yeah. problem. Yep. Yeah. So. And then he's like, it's, it's just, it's not a write-off. And you're like, okay. The holidays can be hectic, but HelloFresh helps keep things simple with recipes that cut back on meal prep and cleanup so you can spend less time in the kitchen and more quality time with friends and family. HelloFresh meals are ready in around 30 minutes or less. Plus, with their quick and easy meals, 20-minute recipes, or low prep and easy cleanup options, you can get food on the table quicker so you can spend more holiday time with loved ones. I just love using all of their holiday recipes, especially because my daughter is so into baking. I don't have to think, which is so key. And she just loves, loves to do it. Oh my gosh. I've also been just loving their recipes that work with keto. The balsamic and fig beef tenderloin or the pecan crusted salmon. It's delicious. You can actually save, on average, over $65 per month when you order HelloFresh instead of grocery shopping. That's more money to spend on presents and activities. Go to HelloFresh.com slash OC14 and use code OC14 for up to 14 free meals and three free gifts. That's HelloFresh.com slash OC14 and use code OC14 for up to 14 free meals and three free gifts. HelloFresh, America's number one meal kit. Shaving used to be a hassle. But no more. Now that I've found my favorite razor, Billy. Even as the weather gets colder, there is still nothing better than super soft, silky skin slipping under the covers or into cozy sweats. Yes, usually as it gets cooler outside, my skin dries up. But with Billy, that doesn't happen. Billy razors are super moisturizing and help detoxify my skin with a built in 360 degree charcoal shave soap. You know, I've been using this Billy razor for a few months and I got to say, I am so, so impressed with it. Not a single cut or a nick, no razor burn at all. I was an avid waxer, but thanks to Billy, I get super soft, smooth results with a razor. It's amazing. Billy's crazy affordable starter kit comes with their award-winning razor, two precision five blade refill cartridges, and a cult favorite magnetic holder. Billy is on Nylon's beauty hit list, and Allure called them the smoothest shave ever. Don't suffer another second paying a pink tax for a bad shave. Go to mybilly.com slash OC to get the best razor you will ever own while supporting this show. Billy is half the price of other razors, plus free shipping always. Just go to mybilly.com slash OC. Spelled mybilly.com slash OC. That's mybilly.com slash OC. And then, so then we go to Kirsten calls Seth. This is where the audience learns where Seth is. Mm -hmm. He is with Luke in Portland. Right. First of all, now we get to see scruffy Luke, who looks amazing too. There's but a lot of scruff <laughs> in right? this episode, and it's working for all of them. I'm just going to put it out there. Right. So Carson, like at first I was like, who's Carson? Yeah. Oh, yes. Me too. And uh, he's like, hey, Mrs. Cohen. And we get to see Luke again, wonderful Chris Carmack. And we see that Seth is just sitting there playing some games. And he said, you know, you know, my mom, blonde, sharp, Anglican features, cute little nose. Mm -hmm. But he's like, I'm never coming back. Right. And it's really sad. So yeah. we know he's safe. You know, he's just at Camp Luke yeah. for the summer. Right. It's not like he's, he's 17 years old, right? Yeah. And he took a mini catamaran thing. 
up there. Somehow, somehow he got there. Somehow he got all the way up to Portland. But then he hangs up on his mom. Like yeah, he's being cool. a real asshole. Seth Sorry. can be a real little yeah. spoiled brat, in my opinion. Yeah. Just gonna. But then Sandy says, you know, he is turning into one angry young man, mm -hmm. which beware, teenagers have the, you know, they're supposed to do teen that. Teen angst. <laughs> yeah. They didn't come up with that term for no reason. He's got a lot of teen angst. His, also, his middle name is Ezekiel, which we learn. I know. I guess that's the first time we Seth learned that. Seth Ezekiel Cohen. <laughs> well, right. no wonder he wants to get out of Newport. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so then Jimmy shows up. Uh asking if they, uh, Kirsten and Sandy are going to come to dinner with him and Haley on his boat. And Tate looks extra Margaritaville. Listen, Tate looks hot. Yeah. Tate is scruffy. Tate looks hot. I'm telling you, this should have, should have been called hot men scruff. I don't know. Right. But there's just a lot of, a lot of good things happening for these men in this I episode. I feel like the dads actually, they just get it, you know? I don't know. But Jimmy and Sandy are similar, mm -hmm. but but I feel like, you know, he's like, oh, you know, you can't do that. Because if you bring him back, if you force him to come back, he's just going to leave you again. Force Seth back, it yeah. has to, at some point, and this is actually, we can talk about this more, but this is, there's a point where you, as a parent, you might want them to do something, but you can't just say you have to do it. You've mm -hmm. got to make it, make them think it was their idea. Yeah, you have to manipulate them. Totally. Master manipulation is how you right. can be a good parent. Right. <laughs> um, but Tate suggests that maybe he'll talk to, Ryan. Right. 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 Okay. So this scene, Sandy goes to talk to Ryan to try to convince him. Now, this was the actual scene where I'm like, okay, I'm in love with Ben. Because right. in this scene, I've never I never thought he looked better. And like, he's smiling. He's smi anytime Ben smiles, it melts my heart. Oh. <laughs> he looks so good. But yeah, this scene where he goes and tries to convince Ryan to come up to Portland, he hands him a ticket to come to Portland mm -hmm. to try to convince Seth to come home. You and know. he's got all these reasons why he couldn't yeah. do it, but yeah. he, he doesn't By the commit. way, yeah. the level of adulting that Ryan is doing, like in this episode and how he and Teresa are, I'm just like, dude, these kids are in high school. Imagine having to work, you know, a job at a construction site, which is a good job. That's like a decent living, mm -hmm. you know? But getting up every day and like taking care of the lady and, uh, you know, uh, in that regard. I mean, uh, ladies can take care of themselves. I'm not saying they can't. But in this episode, you know, it's showing how he's taking care of Teresa. And I'm just shocked that they're in high school. Well, and of course, as his guardian, and that I thought about that. I'm like, what about the court system? Is he allowed to do this? But mm. Sandy has allowed him because of that speech in the, in the last episode of I'm going to do the right thing. And um, Josh talked about a lot about fate. Mm -hmm. This is my fate. Mm -hmm. I have to do this. Mm -hmm. I would do this because this is what you would do, Mr. Cohen. So he's kind of in support of this, which is, I. it, it, it makes for good television, peeps. <laughs> it gets a little refreshing. But I do have to say there's something really, when Ryan walks outside and talking about that in high school and he envisions his younger self. Yeah. First of all, well, I think, I think he's actually looking at it and saying, man, I lost my youth or I'm thinking of the boy that I lost or, and of course the boy, this is just a side note, he's dressed in a wife beater, but for some reason it's inside out and you can see the Hanes on the back of the shirt. Hmm. And I was like, is that, was that on purpose or did the kid go, hey, I'm going to wear, some, somehow it got by that. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I mean, just I just noticed one. that they, yeah, same thing. So it was like super obvious, like this is Ryan seeing himself right, as. right. His younger self. His lost childhood. Yes. yes. Well, the other thing that's going on is, you know, Caleb is very paranoid mm -hmm. and they have to meet in this, like, in this uh, <laughs> garage. And it's kind of funny. And and, and Sandy, and I love drug that deal. Sandy's just having so much fun going, yeah. come on. And, but of course, as we know, it's kind of vague and something's going on. Yeah. Something's going, yep. going on. We'll find out yeah. eventually. Yeah. yeah. Uh, then we're back in Portland. Seth is drawing a comic. And, uh, you know, it looks a little bit like summer. So he's an artist, yeah. we're finding out. But I thought about that. I was like, he was, he actually painted Marissa's room back when you guys painted. Supposedly he did the mural. Right. Is that, is that so, right? Right. Because I was like, all of a he sudden. He painted he's, Paris. Yeah. yeah. He, that was him. Yeah, sure. So he's, he's an artist. He's an artist. Okay. okay. Yeah. Uh, and then Luke and two girls come in, you know, and, and it's obvious like they've all been hanging all summer and whatever. I noticed that that girl walked up to Seth, put her arm around his, and I was like, what's going on here? 
right? <laughs> well, but it, you know what? I, I looked at it and I was thinking about, you know, his, his argument of how much he hates Newport. Mm-hmm. And we're establishing that he's not suffering in Portland. In fact, he's not kind of, he's not the, he's not an outcast. Mm-hmm. He's got friends. Mm-hmm. He's easygoing. Mm-hmm. It's chill. It's kind of idyllic. And he's actually found that yeah. in Portland. Right. And whereas in Newport, for some reason, and I guess you could, I guess my question was, it's the same wherever you go in the world. Mm-hmm. But being new, you can reinvent yourself. Sure. So, I don't know. I'm trying to I'm A trying lot of to people see. move for that reason, I think, you know? Yeah. New start. Yeah. New life. Yeah. Um, but so we're still in Portland, and then Sandy arrives because Sandy is going up to try to convince Seth to come home. And uh, you know, I it's I was very conflicted with Seth and how he's kind of handling everything. And it's like, well, you let Ryan go, and it's a little like I, it just bothered me a little bit. Just like, come on, Seth, like grab your balls, like just just you're putting everything on Ryan. And Ryan being there. And he's not there. You can't be there. And I do understand that he did bring him in and made him feel more accepted, included. You know, his life got a lot better with Ryan. And I totally get that. But he's being not cool to his parents. I know. It's a a very interesting thing because it's good to see both sides. Well, first of all, sitting down with Luke and his dad to dinner. Mm -hmm. Have you ever gone to, known somebody, you know, socially, and then all of a sudden the the domestic yeah. fight comes up, breaks out in front of you and it can be pretty awkward, but they didn't, you know, they, they didn't went flinch. at it. They were just like, yeah. They, like, yeah, Carson and, and Luke are just sitting there. Sandy's trying to be polite. Yeah. And, and I actually really love Adam's acting choices because he's, he's not being, he's not being a snot. He's being a snot, but he's doing it kind of subtle. Mm-hmm. He's like, oh, yeah, no. But he, there is a point in a teenager's life where they come up with an incredibly strong, I know better than you argument. And regardless of whether it's right or wrong, Uh their dedication to that belief Mm -hmm. is very strong. And parents, if you're, if, if you're a good parent and you try not to take it personally, that's when you think, okay, is this a teaching moment? I'm going to step back, let them work through it. They're supposed to be going through these things. And Sandy steps up and says, "No, no, no! You're being a you're being a spoiled little yeah. brat." And he's like, "You can't tell me spend your whole life complaining about it and expect me to be there." But the but the but that argument of you're not eighteen, right? Yeah. So I don't know. I, I he had some good things to say, but I think ultimately P- Sandy's like, there, "There's something else going on here. It's right. not just Ryan. Yeah. It's not just Newport. He just needs to." He's going through something. Yeah, as most teenagers do. Anyway. Well, then we see Marissa on the beach alone, drinking, and she calls Ryan, you know, in, in, in her little, on her little flip phone. And Ryan's asleep in bed with Teresa, the high, school, do, high schooler doing the adulting. Uh, and it was really sad, you know? Yeah. Neither one of them speak, but it's, un, it's unspoken. They know who's they on the do. other. They know. Yeah, they know who's on the other end. Because it's it's like, have you, I was thinking about this. It's a, it's a relationship that didn't end because they weren't in love. Right. It had, it ended because of these circumstances. And also we find out a little bit later that she's, you know, Kirsten or Kirsten says, <clears throat> did you, do you talk? Right. Or have you talked to Ryan? She said, we tried. Yeah. So it was established that they tried. They tried and it just to stay made it weird. in contact, but it was too hard. Right. But yeah. I, this was a pretty Eastern Glow, the album Leaf plays at the end. It was a pretty powerful moment. It I got thought. me. Yeah. Which is not hard to do, but <laughs> definitely got me. And you're right. When relationships end for other reasons, you know, other than you're not in love anymore, you don't love the person, that's the hardest. Mm-hmm. Those are the hardest ones to get past and get through. And it takes time and it's hard. Plus um, visually, it's stunning. And Misha's with her hair blowing oh, yeah. and yeah. Go- yeah, gorgeous. <laughs> that was a real moment there. Hey, you know, the scene, so when when Sandy's actually leaving. Yeah. 
this was one of my favorite moments for some reason when when <clears throat> he says Carson, father, mm-hmm. and when Sandy, this is exactly what we're talking about. He goes, you know what? I thought about what you said. I'm going to back your play. And so it's like, oh, this is a Jedi mind trick. Yeah. And he says, sorry, you had to come up here. And Peter goes, hey, it was worth it just to see ya. Yeah. Like, hey, Pops. You're like, it was just yeah. the sweetest delivery. And I mean, in the back of his mind, he's like, I'm going to let it go. Yeah. I did my best. Help me. He'll, Give he'll come time. home eventually. Yeah. yeah. It's not, but it was so sweet. I Very just said sweet. That. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we're, we're back at Teresa's house yeah. and, you know, Ryan and Teresa are in the kitchen in the morning and it, and he forgets that she had a doctor's appointment. I mean, he's going with her to every doctor's appointment. That's a real stand-up guy. Like, I, it, it's so interesting because, you know, when she, she asked about it and at one point she was like, oh, you, you could go to Newport. And then it went now all of a sudden. To Portland, you mean? To, yeah, Newport. Yeah, to Portland. Because now she's like, Oh, now you're going to go and what's going on? Mm-hmm. This back and so she's being, I don't, it's not like she's flip flopping, but ultimately she's trying to figure out. Teresa's a smart cookie. She's trying yeah. to figure out what's going on with him. Right. Because she knows um, things aren't well or going that great between them. Yeah. Well, she, you know, and Ryan even says, I left Newport to make life easier Ooh, for everyone, which was kind of a ballsy thing to say. And she's like, Oh, I, I you know, that's funny because I thought you left to be with me. I was like, ooh. <laughs> well, and it's like, it's, okay. So then I thought, well, on Ryan's side, I left Newport to make mm-hmm. life easier for everyone. You included yeah. Teresa. Right. Come on. Yeah. But I do have moments, you know, before we get to the, you know, further into the episode, I did have moments with Teresa. I was like, come on, mm-hmm. dude. Me too. Like, okay, come on. Yeah, she does some interesting things here. But but did you, I didn't have people go with me to every appointment. I don't think I did. I mean, no. if anything, you know, Let's, Briar's maybe. dad was there for the, like, but not every appointment mm-hmm. is like an ultrasound or no. like, you know what I mean? So it's kind of just like, oh, they look in your vagina and you're okay. <laughs> and that's that. If you didn't know that <laughs> piece of info, ladies and gentlemen. Yes. <laughs> Quite invasive and lovely. Uh, yeah, but I don't know. He was there for the important ones, you know? But well, I'm not sure about every single like, appointment. Wait, I've been to every one. Are you saying I don't care? He's he's right. He is right. He's going way above and beyond. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Way above and but, beyond. But it's not even about that. She's she's saying what's going on. So she yeah. knows stuff is going on. Yes. But Ooh. then when it's like, well, I owe it to him. And she says, what, why? So just on the day before she was being supportive and all of a sudden she's questioning him. And because she knows he's he's getting pulled back in. Yes. Whether you're having complicated feelings about a relationship or just need a neutral person to talk to, Talkspace Online Therapy connects you to a licensed professional to help you work through it. In my recipe for health, I take care of my mind, body, and soul, and therapy is a part of that recipe. In fact, in my home, therapy is a household word. Yeah, I honestly uh, wasn't into therapy for a long time, but now I am an avid user, and Talkspace makes it So easy to connect with someone and you can do it remotely. It's just the perfect, uh, perfect, what's the word I'm looking for? The perfect solution. So yes, thank you. Solution during this crazy pandemic. (laughs) You could start feeling better with just one message. Set goals with your Talkspace therapist and develop techniques to cope in difficult times. Talkspace is the number one online therapy platform. There are thousands of licensed therapists available for you to match with across dozens of specialties, including anxiety, depression, relationships, and more. Talkspace works around your schedule at your convenience with live video sessions and unlimited messages with your dedicated therapist. If you need a little support to help you through the end of the year or want to start building towards a better upcoming year, Talkspace is here to help. Match with a licensed therapist when you go to Talkspace.com and get $100 off your first month with the promo code THEOC. That's $100 off when you use the code THEOC at Talkspace.com. This holiday season, I want to give a gift to my loved ones that makes them feel special and unique, just like the relationship we share. That's why I'm giving the people I care about story worth. StoryWorth is an online service that helps you and your loved ones preserve precious memories and stories for years to come. It is a thoughtful and meaningful gift that connects you to those who matter most. 
Every week, StoryWorth emails your relative or friend a thought-provoking question of your choice from their vast pool of possible options. Each unique prompt asks questions you've never thought to ask, like what's the bravest thing you've ever done in your life, or what things do you think you couldn't live without? After one year, StoryWorth will compile all your loved ones' stories, including photos, into a beautiful keepsake book that you'll be able to share and revisit for generations to come. This is really such a unique gift. We sent this to my father-in-law, and boy, does he have some fascinating stories. And I can't wait to see the book. It is so cool that his grandkids and their kids and so on will have this book. Reading the weekly story helps connect you with loved ones, no matter how near or far apart you are. I mean, honestly, I wish this existed when my grandparents were still alive. But now, for Briar, I can have my mom answer all these questions. So she will have this for life. With StoryWorth, I am giving those I love most a thoughtful personal gift from the heart and preserving their memories and stories for years to come. Go to storyworth.com slash the OC and save $10 on your first purchase. That's storyworth.com slash the OC to save $10 on your first purchase. This next scene, though. This is a quite a famous scene. Um, Let's talk about it. I remember reading the script on this mm-hmm. and loving the scene. Mm-hmm. Just like, we, you know, we're questioning what's going on with Marissa. And you're reading the script. You really want to know what's going on with me? She picked, she starts screaming this blood curdling scream. Yeah, so Julie scream. and Marissa are yeah. outside at the pool mm-hmm. at the mansion. Yep. And you confront Marissa because you really want to yeah, know like, what is up. What's you know? going on, you know? And you're going to be, you're grounded and all this stuff. Anyway, so she lets out this intense scream to to kind of let us and Julie know what's really going on in her mind. I was there. I thought Misha did an amazing job. First of all, though, I thought it was pretty funny. Julie and Kayla would have like really expensive teak furniture, but they got the <laughs> lightest stuff that was possible from, you know. It would have been really funny if it was extra heavy and she couldn't actually get it into the pool. <laughs> She's dragging it. Like. <laughs> no, but that's a hard thing to ask any actor to do. Mm-hmm. You know, you read that and you're like, you just have to have the craziest, you know, most passionate, enraged scream come out of you. And that's not easy to do. It's not. And... It- it's interesting because for some reason, this has become, um, I think not, I mean, unintentionally, it's become an infamous scene mm-hmm. and the scream and mm-hmm. people use the scream over. But I, my reaction was honest. And I don't know that it, for some reason, it didn't land. For some, some people thought it was funny, but uh, <laughs> I played it for real. Like that was a little bit crazy. Oh, and, definitely crazy. Yeah. And my reaction to it was like, she does the first scream. And I instantly thought of that moment in Princess Bride when the man in black is being tortured in the pit of despair <laughs> and his scream echoes throughout all of the land. Right. Like that's instantly what I went to with her just like, ah! <laughs> it is. She's a fair. It's she's the princess in the fairy yeah. tale. Who's? I mean, it's. I thought the intention was absolutely there, and I thought it. it I thought it worked where, well, especially on the day. It was very. I remember that day. I remember that day. <laughs> anyway, so back in Portland, Sandy leaves and Ryan arrives. Thank you. Yes, so happy for that. But, Thank goodness. But then, yes, I do want to say that when summer comes. Um, to the Cohen house. Mm-hmm. And first of all, you're in your Camp Beverly Hills. Does everyone remember that? You're wearing that tank top. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That yeah. was like the biggest thing. But do you, this is the beginning of Summer's Wisdom. <laughs> this is where they start writing. Because They're this like, is actually, oh, Summer actually has depth. Let well, me she show has you. depth and she's trying to get over it. She's not throwing pool yeah. furniture and she's not no, drinking. She's definitely not throwing pool furniture <laughs> yet. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but, but she yeah. brings all of Seth's crap over and she's like, my therapist said to get over it. I have to get rid of all of his things. Do you do you meditate? I, I've started to try to get into, it's one of the hardest things. I can't sit still for a massage, put it that way. Okay, yeah, I hear you. My mom's an avid meditator my whole life, okay. you know, and I, I definitely try. And when I'm really going through a hard time, I lean into that a little harder and it, right. it does help. And I actually find the Calm app is very helping because guided meditations are easier for me than just doing it on my own. Mm -hmm. Um, So I do turn to that, especially in times of need. But it it is helpful. And I could relate to this with Summer. But she's she references, excuse me, your life is waiting by Lynn Grabhorn. Now, I don't remember this. 
I guess it came out at the time. It came out in 2000 and it was an instant hit. Okay. I, I definitely looked it up. But yeah. But it was, but it's it's definitely, you know. I like the message. You know, positivity is a choice, which is true. Totally. You know, it, I, you're I in control mm-hmm. of your mindset and your thoughts and you can tell yourself whatever story you want to tell yourself and you're in control of making that positive or negative. And the vibrations around you and the vibrations sure. of the people around you. Right. It can be, and and one of the things, finding peace mm-hmm. in this chaotic world, that's never going to change. No. That Ever. is a superpower. Right. I agree. <laughs> and Summer's on that path. She is on so that path. So she's becoming, as we'll soon find, mm-hmm. I think the most, the, the character with the most wisdom. Well, she huh. and Sandy, but uh, hmm. she becomes kind of- Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. I think so. <laughs> Okay, so, so let's go back to Portland. Yes. Because now Ryan is there. <gasps> How awesome was it to hear Luke's, what's up, Gino? Yeah. It was probably the last time we got to hear it, but. Yeah, Luke really, we really. The golden retriever. The golden, just... Yeah, that Luke's a golden retriever. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's so that's true. pretty cute and so true. <laughs> um, but yeah, so, uh, you know, Ryan shows up. Seth is very surprised to see Ryan, but it's sweet because he's also very happy. To right. see Ryan, uh, the love of his life, and Ryan, um, Ryan pl- plays it pretty cool. Like, hey, he man. does, yeah, hey, man. yeah. They're very like you know nonchalant. What's up, bro? Yeah. Um. So Ryan tries to apologize, uh, but Seth is like, "It's not your fault. And, you did not make me leave." Right. Right. And um, Seth implies he's not going back to Newport unless Ryan does. He's like, he's like, "Are you going to go back?" He's like, "Are you?" Right. He's like. Not if you're not. Then he's like, I can't. He said, no, I, well, I can't either. Yeah. Hey, there was something that he said because he actually said me and the OC are a truly beatable combination. Mm-hmm. I don't think I've ever heard any character call it the OC on the show. Really? So if anybody, you guys out there, if if the characters ever say the OC. Refer to it as yeah, the yeah. OC. Somebody was saying on, on Arrested Development, whenever one of the characters would say the OC, Jason <laughs> B- Bateman's character would say, don't call it that. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't think we That's personally funny. would call it that. So, but but yeah, he's 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 maintaining his his position, not going back. Right. And I've lost right. Summer forever. Yeah. And yeah, so. Summer feels the same way. And Ryan, Ryan's not there to kind of, I don't know. He knows. He knows Seth. He's not. He knows what he's doing. Him. Yeah. He might as well be the parent manipulating. Right. <laughs> okay. Oh. Okay. So just really quick. Yeah. Um, so Julie, I, I like this. Is kind of the. Be- I remember this. It's the beginning of something with um, Julie and and Jimmy. Mm-hmm. It's a really sweet scene. We haven't seen them nice together. Yeah, it's cute. And he calls you Jewel, Jewel, Jules or Juju Jules, or Jules. He, he uses the nickname. It was yeah. Jules. Yeah. Yeah, it seems like, oh, you see the familiarity and like the comfort. Yeah, and they're joking, like, yeah. how's what's her name? And he's like, fantastic. He says fantastic again. And <laughs> and limber. And she's like, Yeah, Caleb, not so limber. <laughs> <laughs> you have some good zingers. I but, say. And then Julie says that that Marissa is Keith Moon and Chucky. Like, oh, yeah. Julie's got some funny ones yeah, in there. Yeah, you do. Yeah. I, I, was I proud. still have those pants. You do? I was gonna wear them. You should. Those cream pants. I should if I if I remember that I have a pair of of pants, I should wear them for the podcast for the episode. Just any pants would be good, Mindy. She comes any. pantless often. No, I'm just kidding. Pantless. <laughs> uh, anyway, all right. So back to Portland. The guys they're playing video games. Luke's the same, uh, but here Ryan gets a call <gasps> from Teresa. This is such a questionable thing for a human being to do, but go ahead. On so many levels. Yeah. But I'm watching it, and as I'm watching, like the audience, she calls to say this, and I'm like, oh fuck, she lost the baby. So she calls him to say she lost the baby. Yeah. And Ryan's reaction, like, you know, I, this is a huge thing, for, first of all. Um, and uh, he says, Should I, I'll, I'll come right home. Right. And she right. says, No, no, this is a sign. Don't come home. And he takes her on her word he does. that she doesn't want him around. Right. And he's like, Okay. Yeah, which is kind of an odd thing. He doesn't well, really push it. But, I mean, but, I mean it he's speaks in volumes. Yeah. Like, you know, he doesn't really want to be there. Right. Uh, but he was doing the right thing. And um, so he goes into the be- bedroom and Seth joins him, you know, yeah, to, to check on him. Support. Yeah. And then we see Teresa's mom come into the room where Teresa is. 
and asks her, did he believe you? And she's in on this thing. She is, because I think she loves Ryan. And I think, I think she sees that for both of them, what's best is she's going to help her daughter. Yeah. They don't know if it's Ryan's baby. This is just my take on it. And she loves Ryan and she wants them to both have a chance, you know. Yeah, you know what? I thought about that. Ultimately, Teresa is in love with Ryan. Yes. And we're and, and we in find this out episode, that, that I understand he looks great. <laughs> and they're not, and she it's not reciprocated. But no. this he is, loves her. Loves her. He, cares, yeah, and he's gonna he's her. gonna be there for her, but it's she has to say think she's thinking to herself. I, I'm not, there's just, he's not happy. So I'm no. going to sacrifice what I want mm-hmm. and what she wants is happiness as well. But yeah. her plan is so flawed. There are so many oh, ways yeah. that, that Ryan can find out. Well, he's, yeah, I mean, hello. She's going to have a baby. It's kind of hard to hide that. If there's people in Chino that could say, hey, Ryan, just so you know, I don't know. But but this was, um, this is a way to get him back. <laughs> this oh, yeah. Is the, oh, yeah. So, but Ryan goes, so Ryan says he's homeless again. And yes. I, I wrote for some reason, he seems kind of nonchalant here. Mm-hmm. But I guess that's just Ryan's way. I yeah, sure. Uh, and, you know, he's explaining to Seth that he's not going to come to Portland. He has a job that pays well. And Ryan takes off at this point. Um, With the great music, All the Arms Around You by Halloween Alaska. Right. I like that. Yep. That and feeling. Both boys are considering their decisions. Then you see Seth run out to get Ryan, who is already at the door. Yay. Yep. And they decide <laughs> to go back to Newport. Yeah. Yeah. Because, well, the show wouldn't really exist if they didn't. But yeah. thank goodness they both come to it at the same exact time. They're on their way. Back at the Cohen, uh, construction site. <laughs> construction site <laughs> and uh, some Mushu. Pork, Kirsten and Sandy are still not getting along. And nope. Kirsten's still giving the stink eye. Right. But? But the boys enter. Enter. <laughs> Thank God. And I, all is right in the OC world. Yeah. <laughs> Yay. All is right in the world. Yes. And 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 oh, I actually, Kelly was so cute. <gasps> You're back. Yes. Yeah. Everything is going to be okay. Everything's going to be Okay. Ryan returns to the pool house and Seth follows. <laughs> this is a funny Ryan moment. closes the door <laughs> on Seth. On Seth. Bam. <laughs> I laughed out loud. That I wonder if funny. that happened. Uh, I feel it looked like Adam did that. You know, just his reaction to the like door. They did it in, my guess is they did it in rehearsal. Yeah, and they, it was funny. And yeah, they, so they, they kept, kept it, it in. That's yeah. what it looked like to me. Yeah. We'll have to check on that. Uh, but my favorite part is how, you know, they're sitting on the bed and <laughs> the truth comes out. How Seth actually got to Portland. So, How'd well, you actually get to Portland? I sailed to Catalina. Then I sailed to Santa Barbara and I ran out of snacks. <laughs> like, <that's laughs> like, yes, <laughs> this is all tracking. <laughs> right. So I bought a ticket. And I took a bus. <laughs> <laughs> a bus? Don't say it like that. Have you ever been one? Yeah. <laughs> on one? It's local. Yeah. Like, but it, there is so, you know, people, this is why it's a water cooler show. People talk about it at the water cooler going, he couldn't fly, he couldn't sail to Catalina or Tahiti. Well, and to be honest, the crossing to Catalina is actually one of the most dangerous passages on the planet. Is it because it I've is seen very people, dangerous? There's like a thing now you can do where you take a jet ski or a sea do, whatever you want to call it, a wave runner, to Catalina. Yeah. It's I like mean, an excur- day excursion. And I want to do it. I'm like, that looks so fun. But like, will you die? There are, I mean, it's <laughs> there there have been some pretty epic disasters. I mean, why you can is do it, it. So do you know like it why has it's to do with so currents? Treacherous? And okay. yeah, there's currents and I don't have there's whales. At times. <laughs> yeah, that's true. There's super pods. Actually, the most super pods in the world out there, specifically in Orange County, there's an eight um, square mile protected area and it has the biggest dolphin super pods in the world. And, and the wildlife has <laughs> Little come known back fact. In. Yeah. But once again, I do have a friend who has kayaked all the way out there. So you, it oh, can wow. be done, especially- It in, has to probably be done only at certain times of the year. It can or certain, be very, you know. very, very dangerous. Okay. So well, him, I still want to do it. But him yeah. by himself- 
can be done, but not telling anyone is not a know, good idea. Yeah. So we're glad that Seth Seth's is Seth's alive and well. Yay! And cracking jokes <laughs> and they're improving on the bed and, and all of that good stuff. Right, because it's like he wants it to be like Castaway or Mermaid or you know, anyway. Right. Well, any guys, um, that first episode kind of feels like it it finishes out the first season for me because now we're back and we get to actually start into that second season. Yes, and I'm excited. I can't wait even for the next episode because the boys are back. The boys are back in town. Yeah. And wait, so did you... Oh, and by the way, this particular episode, I found it. it's on the list of, of the top 10 of all the series for really? a lot of people. I found it highly satisfying. Yeah. I think when it's focused... I think the OC is at the best, at its best, when it focuses on the Cohen family. I would, and yeah, I for think, sure. I think this is what it was a really was well feeling. written episode, mm-hmm. um, well acted episode. I really, yeah. I thoroughly enjoyed it. Good for your first time seeing it. For my first time ever seeing it. Any surprises? Always. <laughs> Everything <laughs> is a surprise. <laughs> um, but yeah, that was so much fun. I think we have some voicemails for us, yes. which is. A treat. Yes, we asked our listeners to ask us anything. Oh, God. And here it comes. We'll see how this goes. Are you ready? I guess so. Hi, this is Kai from Germany. I've got a question for both of you. Looking back, is there another role in the OC you would have liked to play? And if yes, which one and why? Thanks for your great work. Now I try to find the second season of Heart of Dixie here in Germany. (laughs) Wish me luck. Goodbye. Oh, aw, Aww. thanks for that. <laughs> I and love I that. love hearing when we reach like Germany or whatever, even Heart of Dixie. Awesome. <laughs> I actually have an answer to this. Okay. So one of my best friends, Olivia, mm-hmm. at the time, early 20s, we're all auditioning for all of these roles. And I've probably said this before, but uh, anyway, she had an audition for a role of Marissa on a show called The OC. And I was helping her with it and reading... Uh, it with her. And I remember being like, oh man, I want to audition for that. I want to play that role Mm -hmm. for Marissa. And uh, it turned out that I got sent Summer, probably Patrick Rush, our beloved casting director. Mm -hmm. And I went in for Summer and the whole time I was like, I wish I could be reading for Marissa. And Olivia, my friend at the time was like, no, Summer's the role. Like, <laughs> you got, I want that role. You know, we both wanted the opposite one. And anyway, we all know how it turned out. But yes, in the beginning, I was like, I would love to play Marissa. I, I, as I'm thinking about this, my knee-jerk reaction is playing Summer. Interesting. Because, but, but, that's af, but that's after knowing right. that what he started writing. But Josh wrote to you mm-hmm. and, and specifically to you. I auditioned for Kirsten as well. I wanted Kirsten. Oh, how funny. But, and, and, but I just think that we ended up with the characters we're supposed to end up with. Absolutely. Actually, I wanted wee Sandy. <laughs> my eyebrows. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, there you go. Hi, Melinda and Rachel. My name is Joni. I'm from Manila. I'm such a huge fan of the show. I really love the soundtrack of the series. But my question is, other than Adam and Rachel dating back then, did anyone else date anybody inside the cast? Thanks. Bye. Tate and Peter had a romance going. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, I I was married. Uh, Not, honestly, not to my... Knowledge. I don't think it's funny. I, I remember this. There was a funny rumor about Kelly and Ben, but they were just friends. They just remember. Yeah. You know, no, yeah. they definitely never they dated. They definitely, no, no, no. They didn't date. So, <laughs> but, but people love to think that there was some kind of, but I think you guys were the only, I feel like there were romances behind the scenes on it with our crew for sure. Oh, for sure. I think yeah. one of our, I think someone married someone in our crew. Yeah, yeah. If I'm not mistaken. That happened, yeah. I mean, I know they did, but I won't say just in case they want that that (laughs) private. I don't know. Uh, But yeah, I think Adam wanted to date Olivia Wilde while we were together, but everyone wanted to date Olivia. So yeah, there's that. (laughs) Yeah. I had crushes, but no, just kidding. (laughs) (laughs) But thanks for your question. Thank you. Hi, Rachel and Melinda. Uh, My name is Hannah Garner, and I am from Bridgeport, West Virginia. A huge fan of The O.C., my favorite show ever. Um, I watch it at least uh, two, 
two or three times over in a year. <laughs> um, so anyways, um, my question is for both of you. Um, I was wondering if uh, you both could identify um, a favorite memory um, that you have with Misha Barton, um, either filming on the OC or just a personal memory that you associate with Misha. Um, I would really appreciate it. Uh, thank you guys again for doing this. Bye-bye. Thanks for that. Do you want to go first? I, have I just one thought that of something. Well, first of all, we had so much fun uh, working together. And, but you know what? The thing that popped into my head, I had a birthday party at a bar in Hollywood, right off of, right in Hollywood. And Misha came to my birthday party. She, well, it was a private party, so she was loud. <laughs> <laughs> but I remember being like, oh, thanks for coming to my birthday party. But you know what also popped into my head? Do you remember when the three of us went to, I feel like we went together to a Chanel event oh, in yeah. Anaheim? Oh, yeah, South Coast Plaza, Oh, I South thought. Coast Plaza, that's what it was. In the, in the OC. Yeah. It I was, do remember that. That was fun. A few of my best friends were with us, Johnny and Leah, I yeah, believe. Yeah. And I think Nicole was there too, probably. Nicole yeah. Chavez, who was. And we all, they, we all dressed up. Yeah, I I have, there's pictures from that. I didn't get invited along to to all the Chanel's and the Dior mm-hmm. things, and and in that particular time, they they let us dress up in Chanel and go to that event. That was fun. That was fun. Oh, I, and actually, her 18th birthday at Koi, I remember. Oh my gosh, we sat around. Everybody it came. A it was a girl's. It was a girl's birthday. Oh really? Yeah. Was I there? Yeah, Samir was there. Actually, I, I vaguely remember that. Um. Uh, Lindsay Lohan showed up. Yeah, they were friends. Yeah, yeah. They were friends back Yeah, back in the day. Yeah, we had fun. The memory I have that popped into my head. So Misha, one of our hiatuses, had done a movie with Hayden Christensen, who I happen to know. And uh, they worked in Italy together. And I remember Misha and I going out one night. We went to the Roosevelt Hotel. Uh and there was like a party going on in one of the hotel rooms. And Misha grabs my arm and she's like, <laughs> she's like, oh my God, Hayden's here. And I was like, huh, what? Like just oblivious, you know? And uh, she like walks up to him and um, and I'm standing there and they're like talking and he's like looking at me and hasn't been introduced. And she was like, oh, oh, sorry. This is my co-star, Rachel, you know? And I was like, hey. And I met him. And that was the first time. Oh, she introduced you. Met Hayden. Oh, wow. Misha introduced me. Uh, and that was obviously well before working with him or anything else. But she was the one to introduce me to Hayden. And she was like, oh, my God, Hayden's here. <laughs> and, <laughs> and I was like, what's what's happening? Um, but yeah. But you guys used to giggle on set quite a we bit. We had a I lot think. of fun yeah. together working together. We yeah. had a lot of fun times, for sure. Always laughing. We'd get slap happy. Yeah. Um, but yes, a lot of fond memories. But yeah, she was the first person to introduce me to Hayden. Hi, Rachel and Mindy. My name is Amanda. I'm a huge fan of the show. And I just wanted to ask you guys if you remember any funny or cool stories from being recognized from the show for the first time. So yeah, thank you. Love you guys. This reminded me of something. Hey, Rachel, did you know I grew up in Orange County? <laughs> <laughs> nope. <laughs> well, let me tell you. Anyway, um, there's something called the Pageant of the Masters in Laguna Beach. And it's it's literal it's it's where they create recreate art life size like three dimensional it might be the 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 Last Supper by Da Vinci and it's humans recreating it on stage in an amphitheater anyway that's beside the point I was there with CG she was like five years old and my husband Ernie um, CG's dad was sitting behind me and um, for some reason somebody was talking about me and he said oh, well, that's my wife. And she said, you're married to Julie Cooper? How's that? <laughs> <laughs> As if it was like not. Like, oh, you're Julie Ooh, Cooper. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's funny. That was that. <laughs> Gosh, I don't remember for me, but you know, Adam and I, since we were together at the time, uh, going around was probably easier to spot because the couple on the show were together in real life too, I guess. But I don't remember... The first time getting recognized, I think Adam talked about us being followed to San Diego by paparazzi mm-hmm. once, which is, you know, a commitment it's a couple hours away. Um, but yeah, I can't remember like a time. I remember something funny and I, because it's hard to be specific about the time, but I went out with you guys, speaking of the Roosevelt, mm-hmm. and we let, we started at your house in the Hollywood Dell and mm-hmm. it was 
Nicole, Nicole didn't like the outfit you were wearing. And we went to, <laughs> Shocking. we went to Teddy's uh-huh. and um, she was like, she was protecting you because the paparazzi was following us down the street for yeah. you, uh-huh. not for me. But she's like, I am not letting them take a picture with you in this outfit. Who was I wearing? <laughs> I don't know, but it was something kind of like, it was some like shorts or kind of a, some kind of tunic or something that she didn't approve of. Oh my God, that's <laughs> I was, hilarious. I was like, people don't chase me. They seriously don't. They definitely would chase you. Not now. <laughs> Thanks for that question. Thank you. Hi, my name is Brittany Robinson, and I just want to say I have really been enjoying your podcast. Aww. I am a teacher slash mom mm. with a lot of stress, and I have found that your podcast really helps me decompress a little bit. Awesome. So thank you for doing this, and That's I have great. really enjoyed it. This question is to both of you. What is the most common misconception people have about you? And I basically want to give you guys a chance to set the record straight. <laughs> Thanks. Hope you guys are having a great day. Aw. First of all, teacher and a mom, yeah. I totally get it. And awesome. Like, you are incredible. Just keep doing what you're doing. Uh, but yeah, no, uh, that's so sweet what you said about the podcast. Um, so yeah. thank you. Uh, that's why we're doing this. Yeah, exactly. Put a smile on your face. Decompress. It's all good. We're going to meditate together. Yeah. Let's go. <laughs> I need it. You know, the one thing I can say, because I don't know about now, but I remember at the time playing Summer, you know, and Julie, they both were perceived a certain way, especially the first season. And I remember how important it was to me to overcompensate and show people like that I'm actually nice in real life. Mm -hmm. And I remember doing that, you know, the event we talk about so much, uh, the first viewing party where all the fans showed up and we saw we had a successful show. I just remember being, and I've talked about this before, but just being so overly overtly nice and friendly to every single fan as we walked down just to show them that I was not Summer and I'm actually a nice person. <laughs> yeah. I I mean, I've always led, I've, I've always tried to lead with that. And I think what's interesting is so many people say, God, you're so nice in real life. And I'm like, and so my question is, are people not nice to you? <laughs> really? Like, tell me They're like, oh, you have no idea. And people will tell me stories about people that they've met um, that do, or do do a similar job that I do or right. and and have not had that same experience and I just I don't know how to be another way right and but I think that's the exact same thing that I said, like that woman saying how you know how's that because yeah <laughs> assuming that she right. would be like that right yeah no you guys I may have grown up there but I did not grow up in Newport Although I did meet somebody. This this reminded me because we were talking about the montage in this episode. Yeah. The montage was is a hotel that actually is very near and dear to my heart. I do love the place. It is beautiful. It is a nice hotel. And we met we I met you there once. Do you remember that you went um and you drove down and see because CG and I were at my mom's. I and do we came remember to visit. that. <laughs> Who was really, I with though? With Adam. Oh. And I think I feel like Brett may have been there too. Probably Brett Harrison. Yeah. Big funny guy. But um, but I remember I was actually at a charity event at the montage. And I remember this guy uh, who was Jimmy. And he said, I'm Jimmy. He was drunk. He was a money manager. I assume he must have been a criminal, but he was so proud of it. And so proud of Jimmy being That's Jimmy. That's cute. Yeah. I'm Jimmy. Yeah. I'm Jimmy. I swear. In real life, I'm Jimmy. But no, I think that it was just that people would assume that you're not nice or something. Right. Yeah. Thank you so much for all of your voicemails today. Thank you so much, you guys. And we hope you, hopefully you like the look and we're not remote and it feels different. It really has yeah, a better feeling. Yeah, we're actually feeling. talking to each other, it feels like. Not that we weren't, but it's more talking at each other on the computer. I admit I had a hard time hearing things from time to time. And I think that we're just, yeah. We're, we we're, like each other. Yeah, <laughs> we do. But thank you so much for listening. Follow, rate, and review. Welcome to the OC Bitches, wherever you listen to your podcast. If you like to watch us, check it out on YouTube or on HBO Max. Do that. See ya, bitches. Thanks, everybody. I have to pee. (laughs) Bye-bye. Gotta pee. Thanks for watching this video. Be sure to start with the pilot episode and catch all of our episode recaps.